Well, all right, guys. So I wanted to do a little video here. It's just going to be talking about <clears throat> customizing your um, Linux distro when it comes to using a window, uh, um, a window manager and multiple monitors. Most people these days now have multiple monitors. And when it comes to a window manager, out of the box, getting your window manager to work with, you know, your your multiple monitors can be a real hassle. Um, not to mention on Linux a lot of the times, especially if you're doing what I'm doing where you just run mainline Arch. Um, out of the box, you're going to need to install XRander uh, so that you can, you know, uh, get your monitor set up properly. Like for me, um, I just have um, an XRander command uh, that I run uh, with my X in it, which I can just show you here. I don't see why not. Um, if I just go to my, uh, ooh, vim, vim, if I can type and my dot. Okay, not looking at my keyboard. I don't know why, but <laughs> that was a lot of tries to get the actual period instead of the comma. That's a little embarrassing. Uh, but here we have my xrander command and you know i'm setting my nitrogen and pycom but um yeah i when it comes to a new user in linux i understand that this type of stuff is just confusing um now if you're planning on getting into linux and you want a window manager like I understand that for a new user, you shouldn't tell someone, yeah, just run out and start with a window manager. But if you're new to Linux and the main reason that you want to come over to Linux is because of the customizability, wow, that was a loud motorcycle, but the customizability and the um, being able to tailor your system and the advantages of a window manager sound like something that are really up your alley. Um, when it comes to setting up your multiple monitor setup, here's what I'm going to recommend. Um, the best thing that you can do is right off the bat, install a X Rander and a Rander and a Rander is a graphical program for X Rander. So you can run a Rander and then get your monitor set, set the primary one. Um, and, um, I'll actually just go ahead and go through that right now. What you're going to do is open up a Rander here. This is a Rander and you're going to set which monitor is your primary one, which one is your you know secondary. Like you can just click on them and select primary. Then what you want to do is you're going to want to apply it and then also save it here. And then inside of that little script right there, um, you can, um, you can, you can just run that script, um, you know, from your Qtile config here, or if you want to be like me, you could copy that, that command that's in the script into your .x and that RC. Either way works perfectly fine. Also, I will say I put the pop filter on the microphone. Hopefully that doesn't make me sound like way quieter. So, and hell, hopefully it just makes it sound better, but um, you'll want to get your, um, your setup like this and get it because that X render is how you're going to get your displays to actually, you know, render the screen properly. And then past that, um, you're going to need to come into your config and actually set up support for multiple screens. If you're using Qtile, the default config is not really set up for multiple monitors. When you come down in here where I have this define init widget list, you'll actually see over here, this is um, DistroTube. This is in his dot files. Um, but if you were to go and download Qtile and check the regular one, this is actually like screens and it um, just um, essentially puts all of your widgets on one screen. Um, you actually have to go in here and set up, you know, like using Python, just set up, you know, define some screens, um, which essentially you just redo this, this command up here, but instead of, um, you know, defining all the widgets and stuff in here, you just plop in, um, an it widget screen, which is just equal to all of this crap up here and set its opacity and its size. 
bada bing, bada boom, you're done. Um, it's really not super complex or complicated, um, but let's say you wanted to do this and you're new, you don't even know Qtile all that, or excuse me, not Qtile, um, uh, Python that much. Use other people's dot files. I do not know why, but there are so many people out there that will just accept a worse off experience um, because they've done it themselves. They don't want to go, you know, steal someone else's dot files or, or steal someone else's config. Trust me when I say DistroTube and all the great people out there that upload their dot files for, for you to look at. I mean, they're, they're there for a reason. They're there to help you get your config set up. There is no problem with copying someone else's dot files um, and making it a lot easier for you. Like this, the, the window to previous group, all that stuff, just a straight copy uh, from, from DistroTube's dot files. Here's the thing. His config file for his Qtile, even though I've copied a whole bunch of stuff over from it, you can probably tell, um, well, that picture is tiny, but if you watch any of his videos, you can probably tell my version of Qtile, there goes my phone, come on now, be quiet, it looks completely different than his. And yours will too. Copying other people's dot files is, is not always just a simple copy and paste. I am so thirsty, excuse me. I don't know about you guys, but this quarantine has really done something to me. I never really was big into beer or anything, which this is a Michelob Ultra infusion, so it's not really a beer. Like, I don't think any, like, man would be like, yeah, that's a beer, dude. But it's, it's like a light beer. It's fantastic. And I don't know why, but, like, I just stopped at the at the little like convenience store and saw it. I'm like, you know what? I have absolutely nothing better to do. Why don't I just take up drinking? Quarantine is doing horrible things to people. But yeah, so I just wanted to talk about because I set up my extra little monitor over here because uh, I plan on um, playing some uh, Resi 4 in preparation for the new remake that's coming out. Um, and I wanted to stream it uh, here on Linux and uh, show anybody out there who doesn't already know that uh, Resident Evil 4 plays pretty well on Linux. Um, but to stream it and everything, I wanted to have an extra monitor so I can actually, you know, like c chat and stuff so i got that all set up and i was just going about setting it up and i mean it just it, it's one of those things where when you set up a new monitor in windows you know it just flat out works and i know that for people when you come over to linux like especially if you're a new to linux user you're like why like why why doesn't it just work out of the box well in most cases, I'll go ahead and tell you this, it probably will work. If you're using something like Ubuntu, um, or I'm trying to think, what's another good one? Um, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, you know, um, Pop OS, um, you're most likely gonna plug in a, a, another monitor and it'll just work. Cause things like ARAND or all that stuff are already set up and it's, it's just, it's built for people who don't want to have to deal with the more advanced stuff like this. However, I will say it's actually much, much um, better when you know how all this stuff works. Like for me, if like for, for that person, let's say who's using Ubuntu out there and doesn't know how to use x or to set up your displays, doesn't know um, like how the window manager that they're using, uh, how it works. When there's a problem with your screens, I know, how, like, I know where to look for the problem and figure out what's going wrong. Somebody who has never learned these things at all, 
for one, it comes in, like, they're most likely not going to fix the issue and just reinstall either another Linux distro or go back to Windows. And that's, I mean, that's, that's not what you want, period. Um, and it's just because they're coming in at a disadvantage at that time of need. If when you install Linux, you spend the time to perhaps learn how these systems work. Like, I feel like that's one of the best things about Linux is Linux, if you come into Linux just wanting to get away from Windows and stop using Windows and you're the type of person that does not want to put any effort or time into learning how your computer or system works, you're probably not going to have a great time when you run into an issue because on Windows, like let, uh, I mean, let's, let's be honest. Almost everybody on windows, when they come into a big problem, they don't, they don't spend time fixing it. They just either uninstall the program and reinstall it or uninstall windows and reinstall windows. And I mean, you can do that on Linux too, but if you're running a system where you've got it, you know, fine tuned to you, that whole uninstalling, reinstalling cycle that you go through is just, it's, it's, I mean, that's, that's a big hassle. Like when you're really fine tuning your system to you, um, I feel like it, just in Linux, it's not, it's not hard to learn how the system works either. Like it's, yeah, it can be daunting because there's so much for you to learn because you're essentially like on, on windows, you've had 10, 15 years to slowly absorb information on how your computer works. And now you're coming in flat out, not knowing anything. But that's sort of the cool part about Linux, it, especially like, that's why I love people who uh, really like, like to, like if you're the type of person that you're gonna really like a challenge, Arch is the best thing for you. Cause you can sit down and Arch install is not hard. It's really not. Like installing Arch, just getting a working install of Arch up and running. If you follow the wiki, it is not hard at all. Past that, getting a working graph, like graphic environment, um, starting it up, login manager, all these different things. That's when, when it gets daunting and overwhelming. And really, in all honesty, it's just like anything like complex or any other challenge that you've come up against. Break it down into small pieces and you get over it. Like you'll get through it and it's not difficult. It's just when you look at everything that you think, like Windows to you is just a Windows. But behind windows is all of these layers that you have to know in Linux, like your login manager, like windows has a login manager, but there's only one and it's windows. So no one thinks of it that way, but there's a login manager. There's your display manager. There's the, um, you know, display server. You've got all these different things that are the, I mean, they're essentially the same thing on both. It's just you're learning how the operating system works as you go on, which makes troubleshooting after you've installed your system. And like, let's say you've been running it for, you know, two years. If you know how your system works, when you have a problem, it, you're much, much more likely to be able to fix it on Linux than you are in Windows. But yeah, so um, I guess that's, I guess that's it for this little like, rant sort of video just wanted to talk about displays and I mean I know it can be daunting but dude like to be honest it took me probably five to ten minutes to get both of my displays working the way they should no problem I probably could have done it faster if I hadn't had had just broken down uh because i wanted to i wanted to make sure i was understanding how uh the like from here down in what i copied i want to make sure I, I understood how that was working so you know for a few minutes i looked at it made sure i was getting what it was doing and copied and pasted like i mean it's it's really not too too complicated um now granted i mean you could be using, I mean, you can make it as hard or as easy on yourself when it comes to doing stuff like this in, in Linux. 
Uh, if you want, I mean, this could be a lot more complicated. Like maybe I'm using DWM. DWM is a, is a, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's a ton more difficult, but it is more difficult than using Python here in Qtile. Um, you actually have to recompile. You know, you've got to do more steps, but it's, it's up to you. You can go as complex or as little complex as you want. All I'm saying is that challenge yourself just a little bit in Linux. You know, you never know where it might put you or um, how good you might feel after learning. So like that's one of the things that I do really and genuinely love about Linux is the feeling of accomplishment that you actually get from using the operating system. You actually learn stuff like in Windows, when you get an error message in Windows, the odds of you researching and figuring out exactly what that error message means and fixing it on Windows, I, I mean, I would be astounded if you actually did. Like, I don't, I don't know anybody that does that. Period. Who actually fixes it? Most of the error codes that I know, or error messages that you get on Windows are absolutely useless. So, you know, it is what it is. But. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. I had a lot of fun talking. Hope you had a lot of fun listening. And um, if you want to support me in the videos that I make, please head on over to LBRY. I'll have my link in the description. You can go over there. It's just like YouTube. It's a fantastic alternative to YouTube. Um, and you get actually paid in LBC to watch videos, do stuff on the platform. And you can tip me over there. And that's the best way that I you know, can think to actually get monetization off of these videos because Lord knows YouTube will never help me, period. Yeah, so thank you guys for watching um, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.